Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video we're going to be continuing the read-along of The Secret Zoo, Riddles and Danger by Brian Chick. And as last time we completed chapter 7, so today we'll be starting off with chapter 8. And as always I'll be showing you any pictures from um, either the letters from Mr. Darby or anything like that. We don't usually see too many pictures, but uh, I'll show you any that we come across. Let's jump into it. Chapter 8 Below the Knickknack and Snack Shack. The scouts stepped out into a new tunnel that looked very much like the other. Stone walls rose more than 10 feet above them, and the ceiling was arched. Velvet curtains dangled in front of dark passageways. Up ahead, the tunnel swung left and disappeared. A few dim lights were set in the walls. Insects skittered across the floor, and dusty cobwebs clung to corners. The eerie ground underground passage reminded Noah of something beneath an ancient city. The grottos, Tank said, east-north side of the zoo. An earthy, musty smell hung about, and the stale air was difficult to breathe. Noah stroked his fingertips across the walls. They were damp and cool and gritty. east north has been here a long time, Tank said. He turned around and was now walking backward in order to face the scout. It's an original section. No going to miss here. As they walked past the curtains, Richie read the engravings on the gold plates out loud. The Secret Koala Castle. Metropolis. The Secret Chinchilla Villa. Tank said, All the ones marked secret go to sectors in the secret zoo. All the others go to places in Clarksville Zoo. Mostly exhibits, but a few ordinary sites do. Noah remembered his sneaky visit to the grottos and how he ended up in Flamingo Fountain. He knew a thing or two about the ordinary sights Tank was referring to. They were hardly ordinary when you were merged in the, in, on them in, on the back of an emperor penguin. The walls around the curtain marked the secret elephant event and began to rumble. The ceiling rained dirt and powdery pieces of mortar. The ground shook and ins insects scattered. Richie, who had been standing in front of the curtain, jumped out of the way, ducking behind Ella. From where Noah stood, it looked like Ella's head had suddenly sprouted the pom-pom on Richie's cap. Tank laughed. Don't sweat it, Richie. The elephants are just goofing around. Happens all the time. They won't come to the grottos unless they need to. The rumble softened and then faded out altogether as the elephant charged off into the reaches of the sector. Tank dropped down beside a curtain marked the knick-knack and snack shack. Right here, he said as he pointed to the ground. The scouts crouched low around the big man. Here's one of the Sasquatch prints I saw. The impression in a soft spot in the ground detailed a foot, one that could crush a full-grown watermelon. Richie gasped. You gotta be kidding me, Ella said. You sure it wasn't King Kong strolling around down here? This was a Sasquatch, he said. Medium-sized. Medium-sized, Richie squeaked. His lips curled into new shapes as he searched for something more to say. In the end, he managed only to speak, squeak, medium-sized, a second time. Tank rose and pulled back to the curtain to the knick-knack and snack shack. Follow me. The scouts did. When the curtain touched Noah, he felt its magic course through him like a weak jolt of electricity. Beyond the gateway... The tunnel continued straight above about 15 feet and ended at a steep flight of blocky steps. Tank headed toward it, a few dim lights in the walls showing the way. Halfway up the stairs, he turned to the scouts, held his finger to the tip of his nose, and emitted a near-silent, Shh, how come? Richie whispered. Tank lifted his finger toward the ceiling. The scouts craned their necks. They listened. Faint footsteps came from above and a muffled voice. Noah heard something else as well, a muted ding, like that of a cash register. The knick-knack and snack shack, Megan whispered. Up there, Tank mouthed. Noah had for totally forgotten where they really were. Right above them was the Clarksville City Zoo, bustling with activity. With a sideways nod of his head, Tank gestured for the scouts to continue up the steps. At the top of the staircase was a long hatch door. Tank and the scouts crawled up and hunkered in beneath it. In the shadowy recess, it was almost too dark to see. Tank's big eyes seemed to hover in space like the eyes of a comic strip char character startled by the dark. 
The crossers were huddled so close that Noah could hear his friends breathing. Ugh! Ella softly groaned. What's wrong? Tank whispered. <laughs> I smell someone's breath. Or armpit. Either way, I think I'm going to barf. Sorry, Richie whispered. I had onion rings for lunch. Anyone got a mint? One mint, Ella said. You have more luck putting out a forest fire with a wet wipe. As her eyes began to adjust, Noah saw a Tank's arm reach out and pluck Richie's pen light from his shirt pocket. He turned it on and shined it along the far end of the hatch. See that? Tank whispered. Several strong hinges were fastened to the edge of a hatch. Along one was a tuft of mangy hair. Sasquatch left that, Tank whispered. Got his fur pinched in it. The scouts stared at the tuft of hair, silent. Above them, the cash register dinged again. Then footsteps moved across the hatch. Just past his door, you can see the east side of the perimeter wall. Fort Scout is clear as day. Noah thought about this. Then he said, You think the Sasquatches will try to escape here? Tank shrugged. Maybe. Makes sense, don't you think? It's the least guarded spot in the whole Clarksville Zoo. In a whisper, Megan said, But maybe the Sasquatch just wandered off. Got lost in the grottos before eventually making its way back. Could be, Tank said, but we've seen the Sasquatches are smarter than that, haven't we? Noah thought of the Darklands, how the Sasquatches had kept Megan prisoner for weeks knowing the secret society would eventually come after her, presenting them a way to escape. Tank was right, the Sasquatches might be as smart as humans, maybe even smarter. Come on, Tank said as he squeezed by the scouts on his way down the steps. I've got a few more things to show you before we're done for the day. For the next 45 minutes, Tank escorted the scouts through the grottos, explaining them as they went by. By the gateway to the secret rhinorama, they heard the muffled sound of a stampede beneath through the walls. At the portal to the secret penguin palace, they stroked their hands along the sheet of ice that had formed over the bricks. By an entrance to the secret butterfly nets, they walked through a cloud of butterflies. Near the portal to the secret forest of flight, they kicked through a kaleidoscope spell of feathers. Finally. Tank led them to a velvet curtain marked Zoo Security. To get through, they had to cram themselves into a small room. There was enough light to see that, the, that in front of them was a pair of folding doors that opened outward. Noah realized they were in a closet. Ella said, You sure we're not both about to step into Narnia? Tank chuckled. Narnia's, Narnia's make-believe, girl. Then he pushed through. They walked into a place that Noah immediately realized was a small security building at the front of Clarksville Zoo. The building had a wall with long tinted windows that looked out at the main gates. Another wall had dozens of black and white security monitors mounted to it. At a desk in front of his wall sat a man with fiery bright red hair. With his back to Tank and the scouts, he was thumbing, thumbing through a magazine and bobbing his head as an iPod poured music into his ears. When Tank tapped him on the shoulder, he spun around, revealing frightened, freckled face. Charlie Red, one of the scout's biggest enemies. Charlie jumped from his chair. Tank, you want to give me a heart attack? Tank bellowed and laughed and clapped Charlie on the shoulder. Sorry, man, he said. Just thought we'd drop by. Next time, call first, Charlie said. His gaze wandered off to the scouts, and he said, Oh... You brought company. Yes, indeed, Tank said, just showing our little friends the ropes. Charlie considered this. Without taking his eyes off the scouts, he said, And you think that's a good idea? Mr. D does, Tank said, and that's pretty much all that matters. He turned to the scouts and said, Come on, gang, time to go home. Then he headed for the nearby exit. Charlie leaned toward the scouts, stuck his chest out, and scowled at them as they passed. Richie cowered to one side, but Ella crossed her eyes, stuck out her tongue, and shoved her face right back at him. Outside, Tank said, We'll send a message with Marlowe to set up the next cross training. We'll spend some more time in the grottos. Noah thought of all they had seen today. What more is there?
he asked. Tank winked and said, Oh, there's so much more. Why don't we keep it a surprise? With that, the big man turned and walked back into the security building. The scouts looked at one another and realized the place for words was gone. They turned, headed through the main gates, and made their way home. Chapter 9 Questions in Fort Scout Noah fitfully tossed on his bed. He couldn't sleep. His excited mind kept replaying scenes from the scout's excursion through the grottoes earlier that day. It kept astounding him to think that the web of tunnels extended into his neighborhood. Did they run through his own yard? If so, were purry dogs in them this very moment? Noah unknotted himself from the sheets and jumped out of bed. The clock on his nightstand read 136. He went to the window, peered out into the distant trees, and tried to pull the image of the tarsier from the shadowy shapes. Nothing. As usual, there was no sign of peculiar bug-eyed things. His thoughts drifted to Fort Scout. He could hardly believe that his tree fort was being used by citizens of another world to guard the border of his local zoo from an ancient evil. He wondered who was out there, which descender, and which animal. At what point did my life go so incredibly insane? He asked himself. Knowing he wasn't going to be able to sleep anytime soon, he snuck out his bedroom and tiptoed down the hall. He crept down the stairs and into the kitchen. He stared out the window at Fort Scout but could see little more than its basic shape. An idea struck him. It wouldn't hurt to go and check out, uh, check on everything. Maybe it would help but put his mind at ease. And Mr. Darby had said it was okay. I'll just peek in, he told himself. At the back door, he slipped on his jacket and his red hunting cap. He eased himself outside and bolted across the yard, the big ear flaps on his cap bouncing. He climbed the ladder and entered the fort. Sitting by a window was Sam, the descender who used the magic of his jacket to grow wings and fly. Around him were close to a dozen prairie dogs. Sam stared at Noah with a stunned look on his face. I couldn't sleep, Noah explained. Are you... Sam glanced toward the house and checked the windows. All the lights were off. It would be just great if your mom woke up right now and found your bed empty. She won't. And how do you know that? She's a heavy sleeper. Both my parents are. Noah paused. Listen, I'm not going to stay long. I just want to see what you're doing. Besides, it is my tree fort, you know. Sam shook his head in irritation, then fixed his eyes on Noah. You're killing me with this. Noah kept silent as he waited for a response. Sam finally gave in. Fifteen minutes. That's it. Noah nodded. He walked across the fort and took a seat beside Sam at the window. As he did, a particular portly prairie dog yipped twice around across the wooden floor and launched into Noah's lap. P-Dog. Noah petted his animal friend and asked, How did they get up here? Sam pointed to where a spiral staircase met a hole in the floor. The steps wound around the tree trunk, and they used the same tunnels the Tarsiers use. There's an opening under your shed. How long has it been there? Probably longer than you've been alive. Noah glanced at his shed and considered this. Then he scanned the tree for it. The prairie dogs were everywhere, getting into everything, their jittery movements making them seem frenzied. A small one stared into the eyepiece of Noah's binoculars and jumped back when the magnified images filled his vision. Another one had tunneled into a few Star Wars blankets that the scouts kept in the fort and was now lost in their folds, yipping in frustration. Another was probing through a pile of Richie's nerd gear, shiny pens, tiny tools, and little electrical gadgets that blinked and beeped and probably stored more data than all the computers at Clarksville Elementary. See anything weird? Noah asked. You mean other than a kid running around his yard at night in his pajamas? Noah was about to ask who he'd seen, then became thankful he figured it out before the question had left his lips. He nodded. Nope. Sam pointed out to the window to the three rope bridges that connected the fort to lookout platforms on the distant trees. Are we certain the bridges can't be seen from the houses? Sam asked. Noah nodded. Way too dark, plus the trees and everything. Good. I'm going to post some of the prairie dogs on them. It can't hurt to put them to work. You cool with that? Noah nodded. Sam said, 
P-Dog. The prairie dog turned to Sam, who motioned to the bridges. P-Dog jumped off Noah's lap and, yipping softly, swept twice around the fort and led six of his companions through the open doorway. Noah watched in awe. It still amazes me. The animals. The way they understand. Yeah, well, the communication only goes one way, let me assure you. To me, a growl is a growl, a grunt is a grunt, and a bark is as meaningless as a burp. There sounds nothing more. Can you understand them? Some of the old-timers, yeah. Mr. Darby, a little. But with him, just about anything's possible. Noah nodded. A part of him already knew this. Noah turned and stared silently into the night. For a bit, he watched the silhouettes of the prairie dogs move up and down the bridges. Who is he? Noah's question came out of the blue. Who's who? Mr. Darby. Sam smiled. He's the man. Numero uno. Did he know Mr. Jackson, the guy who created the secret zoo? I don't know. He doesn't talk about it. Nobody asks. Some say... His voice trailed off. Some say what? Never mind. Noah thought to press the issue and decided against it. After a few minutes, P-Dog scurried back to the fort to Fort Scout, his small silhouette just visible against the lighter shadows. He stopped at the window beside Noah, where he stood on his haunches and yipped once. Realizing that he wanted to be placed on the window frame, Noah scooped up his limp, trusting body and set him there. For the next few minutes, Sam and Noah didn't speak. On the bridges, the prairie dogs continued to scamper back and forth, staring out at the yard. A few of them seemed to have given up on where Noah lying down, curled into the warmth and comfort of their own bodies, perfectly still and probably asleep. Noah grabbed the scout's binoculars and surveyed the zoo landscape. When he spotted the knick-knack and snack shack, his concern peaked. Do you think the Sasquatches will try to escape? he asked. Sam nodded. They're trying to get to DeGraff. Noah felt his heart drop. How do they even know who he is? For what seemed a long time, Sam said nothing. On the ground, the wind swirled and the dusting of snow and rustled the dead, dry leaves. On the window frame, P-Dog's P-Dog sat on his haunches, his front legs dangling over his belly. Finally, Sam fixed his stare on Noah. Why do you want to know this stuff, kid? It's only going to get you more involved. You still have a chance to stay out. The burden we're asked to carry? It's heavy. Too heavy. Noah said, Then share the weight. Sam considered this. P-Dog stood at full height on the window frame, his, eye, his dark eyes fixed on the descender. You need to understand something right away, Sam said. There's a connection between DeGraff and the Sasquatches. Noah's stomach dropped. Up to this point, the scouts hadn't considered the possibility of a relationship between the Shadowists and the Sasquatches. Sam brushed his sloppy bangs out of his eyes. Then he began to talk. And I'll stop the video there, ending chapter 9. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll be continuing the read-along of the Secret Zoo Riddles and Dangers next time. We'll be, we'll be continuing with chapter 10. And as always, guys, please take good care of yourselves, and thank you so much for watching, and we'll hope to see you soon. Take good care.